if you find your freezer is not cold enough, so on this Prestige model, it has a reading at the top, it's off at the moment, but it says the inside temperature, and it wasn't getting any lower than about uh, minus seven degrees centigrade, it's really struggling to go to the normal minus 18 or 20. Then before you check it out and get a new one, what you need to check is whether it's all iced up like this one was. So even though it's a frost-free, ice-free freezer, has this recirculating fan at the top and the cooling pipes are behind this. Uh, I found at the bottom the shelf was jammed in through ice and you can see here, this is after 12 hours of defrosting, still a huge great sheet of ice here and you can see it's uh, blocking the circulation of air between the cool pipes and uh, the rest of the fridge. So what you've got to do, and what you should do first before you chuck it out, Take all these shelves out. Get yourself a screwdriver, unscrew all these screws around here. Remove this simple piece of plastic and see if there's further ice behind it blocking off the airflow and stopping it from cooling efficiently. And to speed up the defrosting, you could use a hairdryer if you're in a hurry. Otherwise, just leave the door open and turn off. Don't forget to uh, have lots of rags ready to collect the water that's going to start flowing off the ice. If you do all that, de-ice it, turn it back on again, and it still doesn't uh, get cold enough when you turn it back on. Then there is one more thing you can do before chucking it out. I'm not going to go into too many details because there's quite a few YouTube videos out there. Uh, but you can regas it. And also, uh, at the same time, of course, check for leaks. Um, so it involves clamping a, uh, a piercing pipe adapter onto, I think on my one, it's the low pressure side, which would be this side here. There's this little sign here. Uh, it's a suction pointing over to this pipe. Uh, so you clamp on the little uh, sort of valve uh, piercing tap attachment and uh, Measure the pressure, connect it to a gas cylinder bottle and regas it. So I'm not going to go into too many details because I think on mine it's just a problem of it iced up. I very nearly bought a new one, um, but models like this one is actually quite efficient, not too old. They're about uh, 750 quid or so, pounds, UK pounds. Um, also, worth mentioning, somewhere you'll see a little sign like this. If you do go down the regassing route, then you ought to look for this little sign. And this one says refrigerant, and it's R600A. That's the type of refrigerant uh, gas canister that you need for regassing. Uh, I think that's relatively new, being R600. So I'll come back to this once I've got the plate off. So that's the back off. See so the big hole. Thought there might be pipes here, but actually you can see here is the cooling, uh, whatever, condenser, radiator, whatever you call it. And uh, it might have been more iced up because this is 12 uh, hours later after starting to defrost it. But you can see this big sheet of ice is going to block the airflow through that collection of cooling pipes and is going to impair how much you can uh, cool. So defrosting it and de-icing it. Uh, is definitely going to make it quite a lot better. Let's see if it does. And let's see if we can save getting a new freezer. Polystyrene just lifts out the way to get a better view, better access to that pipework. And also helps to defrost it a bit quicker. And what's the reason we got all this ice? Well, I think uh, without the ice being there, we'll see in a minute when it's uh, all melted, there should be a little drain hole at the back and as the uh, air condenses on this pipework, water drips down to the bottom, should go through a little hole and collect in a tray that's on the top of the condenser. Uh, then the heat from the condenser evaporates the water. That's how it keeps it frost free. Of course, once that little hole and that mechanism is uh, blocked, then the water starts collecting, turns to ice, and it just grows and grows and grows, as you can see. And this is it, once it's fully defrosted, you see at the bottom, it's got that little collection tray there. And there's a hole right in the bottom, if we can get to it. Can't really see it very well there. 
but basically I think maybe there that drips onto the compressor at the back and actually uh, this is a little while after I defrosted it all and the frost is no longer collecting uh, just in case you ever did get any dribbles coming out I put this uh, tea towel at the bottom as well to collect it and hopefully hopefully evaporate any water that comes off it but it all seems to be fine now and there it is all back together again and after a few hours the temperature is now back to minus 24 just on a standard setting so that's all working fine again so there you go try that before you chuck your freezer out thanks for watching bye